we celebrate uh, Mother's Day this weekend as a prelude for Mass. Uh, Kim and I would like to share with you this song uh, that actually was written just a few years ago. And what's beautiful about it is that um, the lyrics of it uh, make an analogy between God's love for us just like a mother's love for her child. And so we'd like to share this with you.
sisters, as we come to this fifth Sunday of Easter, we will hear Jesus begin to, the risen Jesus begin to warn the disciples that he's not going to be with them forever, that he's going to the Father. Change is so difficult. I'm going to talk a lot about that today. And I'm sure the disciples were awfully afraid of what all that meant if they even understood it. That being said, we come before the Lord in a time where great change has happened, and we pray that the Lord will send the gifts he sends, the gift of the Holy Spirit, down upon us. To not just give us peace, but as we prepare and begin looking toward Pentecost, all the gifts that the Spirit brings. Preparing ourselves for these sacred mysteries, we call to mind our sins and our failings and our doubts. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words and what I have done and in what I have failed to do through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask the Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ have mercy, Christ have mercy, Lord have mercy, Lord have mercy. Thank you. 
Almighty, ever-living God, constantly accomplish the Paschal mystery within us, that those you were pleased to make new in holy baptism may under your protective care bear much fruit and come to the joyful, the joys of eternal life. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. As the number of disciples continued to grow, the Hellenists complained against the Hebrews because their widows were being neglected in the daily distribution. So the twelve called together the community of disciples and said, It is not right for us to neglect the word of God to serve at table. Brothers, elect from among you seven reputable men filled with the spirit and wisdom, whom we shall appoint to this task, whereas we we shall devote ourselves to prayer and to the ministry of the word. The proposal was acceptable to the whole community. So they chose Stephen, a man filled with faith and the Holy Spirit, and also Philip, Prochorus, Nicor, Timon, Parmenas, and Nicholas of Antioch, a convert to Judaism. They presented these men to the apostle, who prayed and laid hands on them. The word of God continued to spread, and the number of disciples in Jerusalem increased greatly. Even a large group of priests were becoming obedient to the faith. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Lord, let your mercy be on us as we place our trust in you. Lord, let your mercy be on us as we place our trust in you. Exalt you just in the Lord. Praise from the upright is fitting. Give thanks to the Lord on the harp. With the ten-string lyre, chant his praises. Lord, let your mercy be on us as we place our trust in you. Upright is the word of the Lord, and all his works are trustworthy. He loves justice and right. Of the kindness of the Lord, the earth is full. Lord, let your mercy be on us as we place our trust in you. See, the eyes of the Lord are upon those who fear him, upon those who hope for his kindness to deliver them from death and preserve them in spite of famine. Lord, let your mercy be on us as we place our trust in you. Our second reading is a reading from the first letter of St. Peter. Beloved, come to him a living stone rejected by human beings, but chosen and precious in the sight of God. And like living stones, let yourselves be built into a spiritual house to be a holy priesthood to offer spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. For it says in scripture, Behold, I am laying a stone in Zion, a cornerstone chosen and precious, and whoever believes in it shall not be put to shame. Therefore, its value for you who have faith, but for those without faith, 
the stone that the builders rejected has become the cornerstone, a stone that will make people stumble and a rock that will make them fall. They stumble by disobeying the word as their destiny. You are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people of his own, so that you may announce the praises of him who called you out of darkness into his wonderful light. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, 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 Alleluia. I am the way, the truth, and the life, says the Lord. No one comes to the Father except through me. Alleluia, Alleluia. Alleluia. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to his disciples, Do not let your hearts be troubled. You have faith in God, have faith also in me. In my Father's house there are many dwelling places, and if there were not, when I have told you that I am going to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back again and take you to myself, so that where I am, you also may be. Where I am going, you know the way. And Thomas said to him, Master, we do not know where you are going. How can we know the way? Jesus said to him, I am the way, and the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you know me, then you will also know my Father. From now on, you do know him and have seen him. Philip said to him, Master, show us the Father, and that will be enough for us. And Jesus said to him, Have I been with you for so long a time, and you still do not know me, Philip? Whoever has seen me has seen the Father. How can you say, Show us the Father? Do you not believe that I am in the Father, and the Father is in me? The words that I speak to you I do not speak on my own. The Father who dwells in me is doing his works. Believe me that I am in the Father, and the Father is in me. Or else believe because of the works themselves. Amen, amen, I say to you, whoever believes in me will do the works that I do and will do greater ones than these, because I am going to the Father. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. I remember a few short years ago, we went through a very trying period. It was when we were changing the mass. I don't know how many people said at the time, and it was so very true, and even true for me, and I know my brother priests and bishops and everyone, change is hard. We get in our routines, and it's so very comfortable, but especially change that we have no control over. If I were to have said to you, uh, even just three months ago, what do you fear most, or what's your most anxious thing in life? I think many of us would answer that totally different today than we would have only three months ago. Change is very difficult, especially when we're not the ones in control. So many of us struggle with that. We love to be in control and we want answers. We want to be the ones who can make the decisions and 
that's so very difficult for us right now. And not only that, it seems like no one seems to know. It's change that is happening upon us. I wonder how the disciples felt in those days when Jesus was on and off appearing to them. They knew he was risen, but even how they changed from being that little group of people huddled up afraid after Jesus' crucifixion to where they will be when we celebrate Pentecost a couple weeks from now. This period of time for them was a transformative time. Things were changing. Numbers were growing. People were hearing about this risen Jesus, and they were believing right away. We've been hearing from the Acts of the Apostles and how that church began to form, not just with 12 apostles, but with disciples and believers. And today we hear that there's kind of two groups, those who were Jewish and those who were Greeks, kind of the, the people who were not the blood people who were, were there from the beginning, the Jewish people, but visitors, maybe merchants, people who were there um, in the trade routes and who had come there and began to live there. They weren't Jewish. But now, even they were believing in this risen Jesus. It is so interesting to read uh, the Acts of the Apostles and see a cohesive people join from peoples all over the world. And as those apostles will be sent out, it will grow and grow and grow and grow. But change was happening too. Today we hear about one of those stories when they elected the first deacons. And it went from being just the 12 and then the 72 disciples, but now some more helpers, some helpers to help feed the widows and the orphans. Today, deacons do far more than that, and they serve at our altars as well, still serving at table. How it was, though, for the disciples, the apostles, who had to realize they had to change and grow regardless. They couldn't just stay the same. I think many of us have been struggling with how is it going to be different from here on out? The truth is, just like when we went through those changes before and just like the apostles, there's a powerful prayer we Christians can pray. A prayer for the coming of the Holy Spirit and the gifts of the Holy Spirit. And just as Jesus was warning the apostles like he does today in our reading that he's going to be going to the Father and that we would have to continue his work and do even greater things than he did, he said that. How important it will be for us to understand that those gifts of the Holy Spirit can change us dramatically and put not us in charge, but God in charge. God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. At the end of Mass today, I'll share a, a picture that I was given by to I was given by Lisa Mandeville. It's an older picture, but um, it, it's beautiful. It's the Holy Family. But in this picture, it, it also shows the Holy Family as bigger than three people. It has Jesus, Mary, and Joseph. But then laterally, just above Jesus, the dove or the Holy Spirit, and God in the clouds above there. The Holy Family. Five. Three and one. Jesus today talks to Philip and Thomas and 
and ask them to consider that they would know that he and the Father were one. It will come to pass that he will say that he will send his Holy Spirit to be the lasting gift among them. What a beautiful weekend to begin praying the Novena to the Holy Spirit. To help us deal with the changes that are outside of our control. But most importantly, to have us grow in Christ Jesus. To trust in his mercy. To trust in his protection. But also that the Holy Spirit would have us grow. grow and blossom, maybe in new ways we haven't even decided yet. I do know this. There is a hunger and thirst like never before. Believers are anxious to be with believers. And there God can do miracles. Come, Holy Spirit. That's my prayer. It should be yours. To fill our hearts. To calm them. To take away our fears and give us direction. And should we wonder what that direction could be, Hear Thomas again today. How do we know the way, Jesus? And our Lord's answer, I am the way and the truth and the life. In a special way, we pray for our catechumens and candidates still waiting for their baptism and hopefully coming up very soon on the Vigil of Pentecost. That the Lord would bless and protect them and send the Holy Spirit upon them these days. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for all those workers that are out there making life happen for us, being in harm's way and being people of service, even in their sacrifices, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Of course, we continue to pray for some solutions to this pandemic. For the researchers, for the leaders. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the families who have lost loved ones for whatever reason these days. In a special way that God would protect them and protect their knowledge of our prayers for them and our trust in heaven, in Jesus who is the way, the truth, and the life. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for the people making decisions. Let the Holy Spirit guide them in a sense of leadership that all can abide and trust. That the Holy Spirit will give them true wisdom in decisions truly none of us would want to make. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for our bishop, as he has a foot in two dioceses, still here very much shepherding us and caring for us, and at the same time, having to prepare for a new flock. 
We pray for the Holy Spirit to guide those making decisions for our diocese in the future. And even to send us a new bishop, even as we prepare to say goodbye to Bishop Stephen. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all of the souls of our faithful departed, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Almighty and ever-living Lord, you gather your people into a family. You give us the promise of eternal life and send us your son Jesus to effect that gift. As we celebrate him as our risen Lord and teacher still, help us to be guided by his word and comforted by his promises. And especially, O oh Lord, Answer his call as he calls out for the safety of his flock, the people he has called his own. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you who should proclaim our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation he came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands that will become the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands that will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Lord God, we ask you to receive us and be pleased with these gifts we offer you in sacrifice with humble and contrite hearts. Lord, wash away my iniquity. Cleanse me from my sins. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. O God, who by the wonderful exchange effected in the sacrifice have made us partakers of the one supreme Godhead, grant, we pray, that as we have come to know your truth, we may make it ours by a worthy way of life. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift, we lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just. Our duty and our salvation at all times to acclaim you, O Lord. But in this time, above all, to laud you yet more gloriously, when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. For the old order destroyed, a new universe cast down is now renewed, and integrity of life is restored to us in Christ. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people, exalts in your praise, and even the heavenly powers 
with angelic hosts, sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we had brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread. In giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with Thomas and Philip and all the saints, on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth. With your servant Francis, our Pope Stephen, our Bishop, the Order of Bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own, listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. And your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him, with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we have the privilege to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, 
and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always and with your spirit. Lamb of God, we take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, we take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of the living God, by the will of the Father and the work of the Holy Spirit, to your death gave life to the world. Free us by your most holy body and blood from all our sins and from every evil. Keep us always faithful to your commandments and never ever let us be part. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. I am the true vine, and you are the branches, says the Lord. Whoever remains in me, and I in him, bears fruit in plenty. Hallelujah. Let us pray. Graciously be present to your people, we pray, O Lord, through their spiritual communion, and lead those you have imbued with heavenly mysteries to pass from former ways to a true newness of life. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. As I said, I'll leave you with two pictures. One is the one of the Holy Family with, with God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit in there. And then the second one I would give you is the one I started when we first started Mass in my chapel of Mary with Jesus in the Sacred Hearts. Um, we're going to be sending you a, a mailing this week with Pope Francis's prayer for, for May, and it is a prayer to Mary, our mother, asking for her eternal protection. There'll be a little explanation about some of the things in the prayer as holy shrines in Rome for Our Lady's protection, but um, I hope you can pray that prayer. And also pray that, that come Holy Spirit prayer, the novena prayer to the Holy Spirit, and we will together be preparing for Pentecost. Um, I've shared with you before this Pope Francis's uh, cross that it has the shepherd and Jesus, the good shepherd, and the sheep behind. But it also has the Holy Spirit. And we're praying for the Holy Spirit to unite us and feed us by Jesus, the good shepherd, who is the way, the truth, and the life. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. The Mass is ended. Go in the peace of Christ. Thanks be to God. Happy Mother's Day.
Ladies, may Almighty God bless you, and through the intercession of his Holy Mother, continue to rush tenderness and love from all of your family upon you. May he fill you with wisdom and grace, and hear your prayers for protection for all your loved ones. And we ask this Mother's Day blessing, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen.